Whether you've got an idea for a cool project, you want to get started on learning how electronics work, or you want to get into coding, one of the coolest kickoff points for you would definitely be in Arduino setup. My friends over at Elegoo sent me over their new Super Starter Kit, which is designed to help you get started with Arduino and build your first projects. So this kit's got not only an Arduino in it, which is the Arduino Uno, it's also got a bunch of additional electronics to help you build some starter projects and maybe even come up with some of your own. So I figured before I got started on the project that they sent me over to build with this, I'd let you guys take a look at what's in the kit and see if you get inspired to build something of your own. So let's go ahead and crack into this. So right off the bat, we've got the Super Starter Kit for Uno CD. So this has got uh, some PDF documentation, some code, and some libraries. So this is likely the Arduino IDE, plus some additional libraries that will help you work with some of the electronics in here. Directly underneath, we've got the main attraction. This is an Elegoo branded Uno R3, and this has got all sorts of digital and analog inputs and outputs. So digital meaning that it can be on or off, and analog meaning it can be, you know, from 0 to, say, 255. So this will be the main attraction, this will be the heart of your project. So I thought I'd take a couple of seconds to address some of the changes between the AliExpress Uno board that I've been using and one of the Elegoo Uno R3s. So one of the big differences is that you can see that the Arduino chip, the actual processor here, is socketed, which means that if you wanted to do away with this breadboard completely and solder this directly in, well, you can do that. You would just use this board to flash it, pop this out, and then solder it in place. On this Uno board, well, there's the chip, and you'd have to be real careful desoldering it to be able to move it. One of the biggest changes, though, and I don't know if Elegoo is the only one to do this, but it's a game changer for me. On my old Uno board, well, you can see that all the pins are labeled on the inside. But on the Elegoo board, they're labeled right on the pins. I can't tell you the number of times I've gone to insert a pin and I've had to sort of close one eye and see how it lines up with the labeling on the inside. And not only that, but it's actually labeled on both sides, which means that no matter how you're looking at the board, you're going to be 100% sure that the pin that you're inserting into is the correct one. So I absolutely love that change and it's going to make wiring my projects a lot easier. Going in here, we've got a couple of ICs that we'll have to look up and see. They're probably project specific. Uh, and then we've also got a couple of speakers and that's like a buzzer style speaker and it looks like a capacitor. Uh, here we have a sensor that allows something to det detect how close it is to another object. So if you were building, say, a car that's self-driving, this would send out a uh, almost like a sonar pulse and receive it back. And using that, using echolocation, it would be able to determine how far away a wall is, and that would allow it to determine through your code if it should turn, if it should stop, or if it should keep going. Here it looks like we've got a miniature breadboard and also a soldering board. So this miniature breadboard can be used to prototype out a circuit before you make it final. So your components will basically just push into here and they can be easily removed without having to be soldered. Then when you're sure that your project is ready to go, well, you can use a board like this one. This one's designed, it looks like, to dock on top of your Arduino, meaning that you can build a project around your Arduino without basically making it permanently connected to it. And you've got all sorts of spots on here that you can solder connections um, and uh, you can turn it into a full-fledged finished project. Here we've got a bag of multicolored LEDs. So it looks like we've got yellow, green, blue, red, and white. Here we've got some diodes and we've got uh, some, it looks like probably additional sensors, maybe infrared sensors, and we've got some uh, switches. This here looks like it is most likely a stepper motor driver, and I do know that there is a small stepper motor included in the project. Uh, so this basically allows it to uh, control a stepper motor. You can move it steps forward and back, and there'll likely be libraries uh, included with our CD over here or downloaded from the internet that allow you to do just that. See, if you look at most 3D printers, at least uh, up until recently, they were basically modeled around something like the Arduino Mega 2560. So that essentially, with a ramps combination, would allow you to run stepper motor drivers and everything to be able to move your 3D printer and control things. So this is a servo. Um, a servo is a motor that has sort of set points, so you can tell it to move a certain number of degrees and it'll rotate that many. It's a very precise, uh, precise motor. 
And this is a regular DC motor, so, you know, you apply power and it spins around. They've included 9-volt battery to help get you started powering your projects. I believe this is a sort of variable power supply, so it'll take in from 6.5 volts to 9 volts through this jack. And as you can see, it can output 5 volts. But as we look on the board, it's also got 3.3 volts. It's got a header here that has both 3.3 and 5 volts. Uh, and it looks like you can switch between the two depending on where you're connecting on the board. So yeah, it, it'll take in a range of voltages and give you out steady 5.5 and 3.3 or 5 volt and 3.3 volts. So this is what's known as, I believe, a segment display. It's basically the same type of thing that's in like an old school alarm clock where uh, you can light up certain segments on here to display numbers or letters. Um, so you can see it's got um, each segment here has eight pieces and there are four here. So you can display up to four letters or numbers with decimal points. This looks like an AC relay. So essentially you can control AC or alternating current like on say a lamp or you know other household electronics um, by switching it on and off using an Arduino which is five volts DC or nine volts DC depending on you know what power you're outputting to it. But it basically allows a low voltage DC item to control a high voltage AC item. That is an infrared receiver, which is probably coupled with, I did peek ahead a little bit, and there is a remote control in here. So this will allow you to control your Arduino remotely. You can build a project that allows you to turn things on and off using the infrared remote. We have a USB cable that will allow us to connect Arduino to our computer. I'm going to have to actually look up what that is. Let's take a look at the top and see if we can identify it. So if I had to guess, I think it's a potentiometer and the dial has come off of it did find the dial. There we go. So that's a potentiometer or a variable resistor. So you could use this in like a dimming circuit for a light um, or something where you need a granular control. So it goes through no resistance all the way up to a certain amount of resistance, that type of thing. Next, we have a single segment of one of those displays. So this will allow you to display numbers one through nine or, you know, a single letter. Digging into the final component, well, we can pull out this guy here. This is a 5 volt stepper motor. Um, so this is a 28 BYJ, which is what I used in the uh, Cherry 3D printer, except for I used the 12 volt version. Um, it's a not super accurate stepper motor. You can see that there's a fair amount of play in there, um, but you can compensate for that with backlash compensation. And uh, so yeah, that's a stepper motor we can use for a project. These are a bunch of breadboard jumper wires. So you can see it's got a pin on either side. So one side can go into your Arduino, the other side can go into your breadboard and you can prototype out your circuits that way. Next, we have a LCD screen. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head how many columns that's gonna be. It's an LCD 1602, which I believe is uh, 16 wide by two down. Um, so we can connect that to our Arduino and have it display a you know, much more detailed text than on say one of the segment displays. There we've got our infrared remote that is used with the infrared receiver. So that allows us to build a project that's controlled remotely. These two pieces go together because this is an analog stick, not unlike what you'd find in a video game console. Um, so this allows us, it's essentially um, two potentiometers linked together. So you've got one for left to right and one for top to down. And by moving this around, it changes the variables of those potentiometers and you can use that to calculate how far it's been moved. And we've got a bag of various types of resistors and it looks like they're labeled on the bottom. This will be used to connect our nine volt battery up to the variable power supply or directly into the Arduino. So it's just a barrel connector on one side and the double pin for a nine volt on the other. Here we have a large breadboard. So that's a pretty good size. Um, so if you're not familiar with breadboard, so there's usually a set of circuits run down or a set of pins run down each side, which is positive and negative. So you'd connect your power there and that gives you a common um, positive voltage and ground on each side. So it's, you know, you don't have to run cables all over the place. Um, and then you've got your individual spots here and then you can push your components right into there. Uh, and it's got a space in the middle here. Um, so this side is separated from this side. And if you were to put a switch in between them, well then when you push the switch, it would join the connection from here to here. So it's a pretty decent sized breadboard for building a project around. And here we have some additional jumper cables and they are uh, male to female. And it looks like one of the projects they've included is to build yourself a little desk fan. So that would probably work with the DC motor because you'd want something that would free spin. So it's a cute little addition. And finally, uh, I'm not entirely sure what that is. So it's got almost looks like a miniature breadboard on top. It's got a three pin header. So we might have to actually 
take a look at the top here and see if we can find it. Ah, so this is a uh, temperature and humidity module. So if you're building a project that needs to know what the current ambient temperature and humidity is, well, you could connect this and it'll give you readouts to let you know what the values are for that. So that's that's pretty cool if you're building a little, you know, weather-based project. And that's it. That's the entire kit. Everything's spread out. That's, I think, a pretty decent amount of stuff. You could build all sorts of projects. Um, you know, as as a an idea, you could definitely couple this LCD display with the temperature and humidity controller to get something that just takes active readings and lets you know what the current stuff, is, the current rating on it is. Um, you could build your own little light display by using the remote control plus the infrared receiver, and you could probably get around uh, with the motor you've got and the servo control uh, with building yourself a little car that has the ability to navigate around obstacles. So. That's pretty cool. Okay, well that's our first look at the kit. Lots of ideas to have behind there, and I've got one that we'll be showing off in the next week or two, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel. And again, thanks to my buddies over at Elegoo for sending this over. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. Alrighty guys, well that's it for this one, but until next time, stay creative.